Hello everyone and welcome again to another episode of Minimalist Gourmet. For today I'll be teaching you how to make Spanish rice and beef stuffed bell peppers. Let's get started. We'll begin by making our Spanish rice. You can actually do this the day before if you'd like. You could use white rice or even in the pinch you could use some instant rice. In a medium sized saucepan over medium to medium low heat, bring a couple of tablespoons of oil up to temperature. To this, we're going to add a small amount of onion here and begin to stir fry to add some flavor to our rice. For our seasoning, we're going to start with one teaspoon of turmeric powder, followed by one teaspoon of smoked paprika, and one teaspoon ground black pepper. We're actually toasting this slightly as we cook it over this medium to medium low heat, which will bring out and accentuate all the lovely flavors of these spices. Next up, we'll add one and a half cups of washed white rice to this mixture. We are actually toasting the rice slightly here as we mix it with all the spices to bring out a little bit of that nutty flavor. Then we're gonna add one third of a cup chopped peppers. You could use any type of pepper you like. I just have a salad pepper here and two to three cloves of garlic. One quarter teaspoon of salt as well and one cup of tomato puree. Cook the tomato puree for about two to three minutes here in the pan to cut out any of the raw tomato flavor that it might have and mild out that flavor just a little bit. Remember, it does count as a liquid, so when we go to add our water, we're only going to be adding two cups of water to the rice. The last ingredient that we're going to put in is one chicken bouillon cube for extra flavor and a little bit of salt. We have everything a nice mix. Bring it up to a boil, then you're going to reduce the temperature down to its lowest setting, cover, and simmer for about 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes here, our rice is done. Now this might look a little bit wet to you, but since we're going to be cooking it again in the oven for another 30 to 45 minutes, I don't want it to dry out, and this actually looks perfect to me. For the rest of the stuffing ingredients, you're going to need about two to three cloves of garlic, one third of an onion chopped, and some bell peppers. Doesn't really matter what color you choose, they all are going to work just great. Now when selecting your bell pepper here, you want to be able to sit it down so it's flat. So find a side that it sits really well on here and it's fairly stable, as you can see. And then flip it around, double check that the other side here will be stable, and that's where you're going to cut it. You want to make sure that both sides can sit up without falling over. This recipe will make two whole bell peppers stuffed as a main entree or three bell peppers stuffed as a side dish. I just happen to be doing one today for demonstrational purposes. With your peppers opened up, cut out any seeds that remain, the membrane, and any ribs that are inside. You want to go ahead and have a nice clean vessel that you can stuff with your filling. After you're done cleaning them out, they should look a little something like this. Begin cooking 10 to 12 ounces of ground beef over medium high heat. We're going to season this up with a bit of salt as well as a touch of black pepper. Add in our diced onion that we had chopped up already and begin breaking down the beef here really well as we're cooking it over a relatively high heat. You don't want pieces to be too large because they won't fit in the pepper very well. When your beef is about two to three minutes away from being finished, go ahead and add your garlic, continue to break down the beef and cook the garlic all the way through. I like to add a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce to this as well as one and a half cups of our cooked Spanish rice. Go ahead and turn off the heat as you are done cooking. You just need to break down the rice and make sure that it mixes really well with your meat mixture. Now I like to start off with about a cup and a half of the rice, but then I go ahead and add a little bit more. Here I add another cup until I get the right ratio for my liking. You can add as much or as little rice as you like. That is completely up to you. So go ahead and try anywhere between a cup and a half and two and a half cups total. Our final ingredient here is gonna be some cheese. I happen to be using mozzarella, but anything that melts well, like cheddar or Monterey Jack, work great. And the quantity is up to you as well. You can add just a little bit or a whole heck of a lot if you like it. And we're on to assembly. Now, keep in mind here as you assemble, you do want to be generous with the amount of filling that you're going to use. Take your time to spoon it into all the little nooks and crannies of the pepper to make sure that it is completely filled. However, you do not want to be aggressive and really pack down the, the filling in here and press it hard, okay? It creates a much better texture if it's kind of loosely placed in there and not too aggressively pressed down. Just take your time, be a little gentle, and everything will work out well. Feel free to overstuff these if you'd like. You can heap on a bit more of the filling on top and uh, be very generous with your portions if they're a main entree. We're going to finish these off by placing our sliced or grated cheese on top and then putting them into a 350 degree oven for anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. 
After 40 minutes, I went ahead and pulled these out and they were done to my liking. The cheese was nice and brown, and I took a knife and put it into the side of the pepper to check for tenderness. Again, that's up to you. You can have a bit more tender or a bit less tender. It's completely up to your liking. When it comes to serving, you can serve these as a side dish to another main entree, or they can be served as a main entree themselves. They're packed with a ton of protein. There's ground meat, there's rice, there's cheese, there's vegetables, and it is a very hearty, filling dish. And however you decide to eat them, I know you're going to love them. Guys, it is just that easy to make this delicious dish at home tonight in your own kitchen. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you return again real soon for another episode of Minimalist Gourmet.